Roger, as you know, we've been into this hospital many times during this pandemic in every different stage of it to show you the impact on the NHS. Now, I went back in there again at the end of last week and it is very busy. And I think it's safe to say the staff are pretty nervous about the coming weeks. Once again, the COVID wards here are busy. Again, the staff tirelessly caring for those in here. But one thing's changed dramatically. We seem to have gone now to a lot more younger people, um, predominantly male, young males. When you say younger, what kind of age are we talking about? Between 25 and 60, maybe. So those people in their 20s, are they people who've got a lot of pre-existing health conditions? No, nothing. Nothing so these really. are healthy people in their 20s yeah. who are ending up in hospital with COVID? Yeah. The sheer numbers coming in here now are becoming increasingly difficult to cope with. At times this week, there's been more than 60 COVID patients in this hospital. That's around a third of the number that were here at the height of the first wave in April last year. But the number of patients needing critical care has been proportionately much higher, around 90% of that first peak, placing a huge strain on the hospital. We have been putting beds in between beds to make COVID bed spaces. The whole of the critical care unit, um, as it was, is now back to being COVID. Uh, we've transferred patients out to other hospitals. So you've got too many patients to cope with in critical too, care? Far too many. The hospital says most of those people are either too young to be fully vaccinated or for some reason have chosen not to be. I do get that people are scared of the vaccine, um, but I think they need to listen to all the research and everything that's out there that says it's not a microchip, it doesn't contain pork, um, you know, it doesn't hurt, um, just please have your vaccine. Phil came out of critical care a couple of days ago. He says he thought he wasn't going to make it. At one stage I thought I weren't going to come out of it. I thought there's something not right here, you know, but the staff have been great, fantastic. Phil says he's not anti-vaccine, he just didn't think it was a priority. Like one of them, I'll get around to it later, but it was a big mistake really. I'd advise anyone to go and sort it. Don't want this. The wards recently taken on some student nurses. Many of them made their decision after the pandemic had started. I knew beforehand, but it pushed me in the pandemic, yeah. They're really ill people, and it's a good thing that you're helping them at the end of the day. That's what a nurse does. But many staff are now exhausted after 16 months of continually battling this virus, and nervous of what the coming weeks will bring. At one point, we felt there was light at the end of the tunnel and um, I think now we just feel that there isn't an end. It doesn't mean COVID's going away, it just means that the restrictions are lifted. It, you know, COVID's still going to be here, so I think it's still that people need to be sensible about it. Now, I'm joined by the Trust's Chief Executive, Kevin McGee. He's also the Chief Executive for Blackpool Victoria, and he's about to take that job on for the role Preston and Chorley as well. So he's got a real overview on what's happening in this area. And Kevin, we saw there that some critical care patients are having to be moved to other hospitals, and that's not just happening here, is it? It's happening all over the region. It's happening all over the region. It's particularly difficult in Lancashire at this moment because we have been in this wave of COVID patients. So if you take the activity we've had for COVID, you take all the restoration work, you can see our hospitals are extremely pressurised at the moment. And of course, this is, this is happening now. You, you've got places to move people to. I mean, Blackburn was one of the first places to see a rise in infections. Are you worried that, that actually, you know, as everywhere else goes up, there might not be anywhere to move people? Well, I am worried. But what gives me confidence is the way our hospitals have been working together. We've supported one another magnificently over the last 12 months or so, and that will continue through mutual aid. But absolutely I'm concerned. When you think about the, the work that we're doing now, our A&Es are as bu are busy as they've ever been in a difficult winter. We've got COVID patients still in high numbers, and we're trying to restore all the activity that we've lost through the previous 12 months or so. Now, you mentioned that. I mean, obviously, you know, we're going to look at that tomorrow, actually, how the number of COVID patients always has a massive impact on your ability to do everything else. Well, of course it does, because we've got probably 45, 46 patients. That's two wards full of COVID patients at the moment. But the real pinch point is our critical care capacity. So we've got a lot of very poorly patients in critical care. 
and that means they're critical care beds that we can't then use for cancer patients or for restoration. So there is a lot of pressure on the hospital at the moment. And as, you, as it came across in the piece, that it's about vaccinations. The people who are the sickest at the moment, by and large, have not been vaccinated. That's exactly what we're seeing. And if there's any message we can get across tonight, it's please, please have your vaccination. Particularly in the younger age group, we're seeing people in the 20s and the 30s really poorly. Kevin McGee, thank you very much. And as I said, we will be going back to the hospital tomorrow to see that impact on the rest of it. For the minute, though, back to you, Roger, in Manchester.